far be it from me to defend stand-up comedians. They're always like defending their art form and saying like, we need comedy, we need stand-up comedy. And I'm like, do we though? I, I really don't think we do. I think you just want to have a job. What I think it is, is like, they just want to make fun of people. They act like they're taking on this like moral burden for, for society and we have to just let them do, you know, whatever it takes to get it done. And you know, they have to fulfill their obligation to the world by, you know, making fun of people. And it's like, what you're doing is not that important. It's really not. You're just making jokes. It's not that serious. And they always act like we can never criticize them, ever. But they have to be allowed to make fun of anything, anything they want. And it's just so, it's like, it's all so self-fulfilling to me. It seems like the only people who want to be comedian, the only people who are standing up for comedians are other comedians. And it's like, I don't think it's that important. I think it's kind of an outdated art form. It's like a dying art form. I think that stand-up comedy is like way too overrated. I think it's a remnant of the golden age of television. Cause like, if you think about it, back when comedians would go on late night shows, that was like the only access that most people had to comedy or, or humor of any kind. They would go their whole entire day without laughing or, or you know, seeing jokes or seeing any kind of humor or comedy. And then they would watch TV and they would watch, you know, a little 10 minute bit from a comedian on the, on the late night show. And if you ever watch those shows, like if you ever go, if you ever go and watch like some of the old clips, they're so unfunny. Like old, old comedy is so bad. It's amazing. It's literally, it's crazy to watch. Like I can just sit there the whole time in just, in just complete silence like this for the whole time. And the audience is just dying. And I'm like, dude, how are these people laughing so hard? And, it's, and then I remember, oh, it's because they never hear any other jokes ever. So they just laugh at the dumbest shit. But now there's so much funny stuff everywhere. There's so many hysterical creators on YouTube and just, you know, all other forms of content. I mean, just TikTok alone. If you go on TikTok for 10 minutes, yes, it's a huge cesspool. I know it'll, it'll rot your brain. And it is, honestly, it is. But there's a lot of funny stuff on there. Personally, I have never laughed harder in my entire life than, uh, than on TikTok. Outside of like being with my friends and being in real life, I've seen some of the funniest shit in my entire life. Like laughed so hard on TikTok, just from spending 10 minutes on TikTok. And that just goes to show like there's comedy everywhere. We're inundated by it all the time, all day, every day. With all that said, I truly feel bad for the entire industry, for all stand-up comedians, because Amy Schumer literally and I mean this in an actual literal sense, she literally is an insult to all comedians, to all stand-up comedy, literally because she steals people's jokes. And there's plenty of evidence for that. There's tons of videos, you know, proving, you know, with a, with a timeline of all the different jokes she's stolen. So I'm not gonna go over that. But just recently, now she's back in the news, or I guess not that recently, I'm a little late to this. This is still a new channel. I'm still getting used to making videos. So I'm sorry, this is a little late. You, probably, you might've already heard about this, honestly. But after the slap heard around the world, she immediately tried to make it about herself, you know, as quickly as possible. She posted, I think on Instagram, and she said, I think we can all agree that the best way to unpack what happened is to stream my series and see me on tour this fall. But for real, still triggered and traumatized. I love my friend Chris Rock and believe he handled it like a pro. Stayed up there and gave an Oscar to his friend Quest Love, and the whole thing was so disturbing. So much pain in Will Smith. Anyway, I'm still in shock and stunned and sad. I'm proud of myself and my co-hosts. But yeah, waiting for the sickening feeling to go away from what we all witnessed. Like, oh my god, dude. She's literally making it about herself in the most cringiest way possible. Now, I have this theory, and I, I checked. Again, my channel's kind of small. I don't have that many, view, that many views yet, which is, which is fine. I'm not complaining. But so far, it seems like most of my audience, it says that 60% of my audience is female. So maybe this is a little, a little risky, but I have this theory that when it comes to like people who lack self-awareness and are, are super selfish and like borderline narcissistic, there's a very stark difference between men and women. Narcissistic men with no self-awareness tend to be like evil and violent, like Trump and, and Putin and Hitler. But then narcissistic women with no self-awareness, they're just the cringiest people of all time. They make the most intense, purest, like hyper-concentrated cringe, 400% purity cringe that would just blow Walter White's mind. And Amy, and Amy Schumer has just proven that again. So you may have heard she, she made it about herself with that disgusting, disgusting comment, still triggered and traumatized, as if she's the one that was slapped. But then yesterday, or sorry, uh, Monday, she revealed one of the jokes she wasn't allowed to say at, at the Oscars, and it was, don't look up is the name of a movie? More like don't look down the barrel of Alec Baldwin's shotgun. I wasn't allowed to say any of that, but you can just come up and slap someone. And it's like, Oh my god, oh my god, please stop. It, it hurts, it hurts. There's so much cringe. First of all, Don't Look Up is not, is not an inherently bad name for a movie. There's nothing crazy about that name. So she's like making fun of the name of the movie. And then she says, Don't Look Down the Barrel of Alec Baldwin's Shotgun. Alec Baldwin wasn't in Don't Look Up. 
And then number three, he wasn't holding a shotgun when he shot someone by accident. He was holding a pistol. So she's wrong three times in a row in one joke, and it's not even funny. And then she just says this random sentence, I wasn't allowed to say that, but you can just come up and slap someone. And it's like, dude, first of all, it's not about you. And second of all, Will Smith wasn't making a joke. And he, you, you weren't either, honestly. You were just saying a bunch of like nonsense that's not funny. But Will Smith wasn't allowed to do that. He, he broke the rules, and he's been getting canceled for it. He's already got kicked out of two movies. You're comparing a joke that you weren't allowed to say to someone going and doing something that they were not allowed to do and pretending like they were allowed to do it. That's just stupid. It doesn't even make any sense. And so with that said, I just, I just feel bad for stand-up comedians. And I'm honestly surprised to say that because I really don't like stand-up comedians. I think that they're way, way, way too sensitive. Yes, it's an art form technically, but it's not that important, okay? There's a lot of different ways to laugh. Just get over yourself. But I honestly feel bad because they have to be associated with this. And this, because this is just so painfully embarrassing and so cringy. And the last thing I wanted to say is that I was reading about her on uh, Wikipedia and I literally did not know this. I feel so stupid. I feel like everyone else knew this. Her, her dad is Chuck Schumer's second cousin. She's like his like second niece, I guess. I had no idea she was related to Chuck Schumer. I literally had no idea. But anyway, it's funny because it says here that she was born on the Upper East Side of Manhattan, which is like the richest place in the world. And Schumer's household was wealthy during her early years, which is crazy because it just shows like she didn't even make it on her own. She grew up rich. And I know Wikipedia is subjective and anyone can write anything in there. And so maybe someone put that in there to make it look bad. But for the most part, in articles about people, it will very rarely say if someone grew up wealthy or not. Usually it'll just say the town they grew up in or the neighborhood they grew up in. And you kind of have to infer what their childhood was like by, by yourself. Like, for example, Megan Trainer, it says, uh, was born in Nantucket, Massachusetts. And then she grew up in Cape Cod. And if you're not from there, you would have no idea that, that, that Nantucket is like a super rich place to be born. So Megan Trainer grew up super rich and spoiled and with all the privilege in the world. But you wouldn't know that because it's not in the Wikipedia article. For the most part, I'm pretty sure that's like pretty common for Wikipedia. So it's crazy to me to see this just outright. Her household was wealthy during her early years. It just goes to show like she really is the epitome of, of white privilege and just has absolutely no self-awareness and just wants everything to be about herself. And it's so cringy. And I just want to be clear that narcissistic and you know lacking self-awareness men are are way worse, you know, evil, violent dictators are way worse. I'm not saying that this is worse. I'm just pointing out that this is ex incredibly, extremely cringy, and I truly feel bad for all other stand-up comedians because they have to be associated with this. Anyways, thank you for watching. See you next time.